The final step in the integrated analysis pipeline is to compute the differentially expressed genes between the samples and the conserved biomarkers for the clusters and to visualize these. In Chipster, you can use one tool to get both gene lists for one cluster at a time. For visualization tool, you can list one or multiple genes. Conserved cluster marker genes mean genes that are differently expressed in that particular cluster in both samples. Here, like in the one sample analysis, we are always comparing the cluster of interest to all the other cells in the dataset. A statistical test known as Wilcoxon rank sum test is used here, and the result table looks something like this. Up here, we can see how many genes are in the list. Here we can see the gene names, and here are the p-values and the fold chains. Then, these values here are percentages of cells expressing the marker. This one here means the percentage in the cluster in question, and two means in all the other cells. All these values are computed for both samples, but parameters for the tool are looking both of the resulting values. You can filter this table based on these three parameters. By default, only the positive marker genes are reported. That is, genes that are more highly expressed in the cluster in question compared to the other cells. The adjusted p-value on both samples needs to be lower than 0.05 by default, and the fold change needs to be higher than 0.25. The same tool also gives you the differentially expressed genes between the samples in a cluster of your choice. So this tool gives results for one cluster at a time, and you can give the cluster number as a parameter. The test here is very similar as for the conserved markers, and here as well you get a filtered table as a result. Note that you can further filter the table using a filtering tool in the utilities category. The last step in this two-sample pipeline is the visualization of interesting genes. These genes can come from the list of conserved markers, or they can be the differentially expressed genes between the samples, or just your personal genes of interest. This plot, that we like to call the Marimekko plot, shows two things at once. The percentage of cells expressing a gene is shown as the size of the dot, and the brightness of the dot represent the expression level. On the x-axis, we have the genes that we chose for the plotting, and on the y-axis, we can see the different clusters, separated also based on the sample. The sample is also highlighted with the color. Blue here is for the control sample, and red for the stimulated sample. Here you can see, for example, that these two genes seem to be excellent conserved cluster markers for cluster number 12. Here we see some genes that seem to behave differently in the different samples. We can also use the good old TSNE and UMAP plots to see the expression of the selected genes in different scenarios. In scenario number one here, there's very little difference between the samples. These two genes are thus conserved cell type markers. In scenario number two, there's very little expression in control sample and lots of expression in the treated sample. So these two genes here are cell type independent markers for the treatment. In the last scenario, we see cell type dependent reaction to the treatment. This gene is active in this cluster here in the control sample, but not in the treated sample, and then vice versa with this gene. We can see the same three scenarios here in the violin plots. Here on the x-axis, we see the different clusters, and for each of these three genes, we see the expression level in control, red, and treated, green. Conserved markers show somewhat similar expression in both samples. This gene here is affected by the treatment, regardless of the cell type, so we see strong difference between the samples. In the last plot, we can see that some clusters or cell types are reacting to the treatment, and others are not.